Why does thick white vapor sometimes come out of the production workshop? Why does the factory add engine oil from two different points? And why do they connect tubes to the engine during assembly? Today, I will walk you through the full production process of Volkswagen new 1.5 turbo engine. The first part to be installed is the cleaned engine block. It is made from aluminum alloy. Before installing the crankshaft, the lower bearing caps need to be removed. The 10 bolts on the lower bearing caps are loosened all at once by a robot. Then side locating pins are installed to make later assembly easier. The removed bolts are cleaned to remove metal debris, and they will be reused when the lower bearing caps are installed again. The bearing caps removed by workers in order are also sent to the next station for reuse. The oil nozzles being installed now are usually found only on turbocharged engines. They do not spray gasoline, they spray engine oil. Next comes the upper main bearing caps, which support and secure the crankshaft. Before installation, the crankshaft is coated with lubricant. Because this step requires very high precision, special positioning tools are used. The lower bearing caps removed earlier are now reinstalled with bearing shells. These parts require very high accuracy, so robots handle most of the installation work. What would happen if these two thrust washers were installed the wrong way around? After the crankshaft is installed, robots automatically install the lower main bearings. Compared to manual work, robots offer much higher efficiency and precision, which helps ensure assembly quality. The 10 bolts removed earlier are now tightened at the same time using 10 electronic wrenches. This ensures extremely accurate torque control. Some people wonder why the equipment makes the crankshaft rotate several turns and why it finally stops at a specific position. This part is the crankshaft sprocket. Before installation, it is heated to over 200 degrees Celsius. Using thermal expansion, it is fitted onto the crankshaft. Its main job is to drive the engine oil pump. This is the famous fracture split connecting rod process. This process ensures very high precision between the connecting rod and the bearing cap, and it gives the bearing cap strong resistance to sideways shear forces. One end of the connecting rod is also fitted with a piston. After fracture splitting, the half circle bearing shells match perfectly with the other half of the connecting rod and are installed onto the crankshaft. Two workers work together here. These metal rods help guide the connecting rods accurately onto the crankshaft. Next, the bearing caps are tightened in sequence. Every piston and connecting rod assembly is installed the same way. The bolts you saw earlier were only pre-tightened. Now the electronic wrench performs the final tightening. After that, the crankshaft is test-rotated several turns to make sure everything runs smoothly. Next comes the rear flange. It is press-fitted directly onto the crankshaft. Later, the engine flywheel will be installed here, and it is responsible for transmitting power. Then the front flange gasket is installed. Bolts are placed by hand first, but final tightening is still done using an electronic wrench. A locating pin is installed to prepare for the oil pan. The oil pump is connected to the sprocket through this chain. After installing the metal cover, the bolts are again hand-installed and pre-tightened. Next, the equipment tightens the flange bolts and the chain cover bolts at the same time. Then, the oil baffle is installed, followed by the oil pump. The bolts are placed by hand and then tightened with an electronic wrench. By now, you may have noticed that almost all bolts are tightened using electronic wrenches. The oil pump sprocket is installed next which shows that the oil pump gets all its power directly from the crankshaft. Finally, a cover is installed. This bracket is used to mount the particulate filter. Long-time viewers of my channel know that the particulate filter is installed later in the final assembly workshop. Next, equipment automatically applies sealant to the engine block. This sealant is used to install the upper oil pan. The sealant path and amount directly affect sealing performance. The upper oil pan is installed and tightened by equipment. Tightening all bolts at the same time ensures equal clamping force at every position. A sealing strip is installed next, followed by the engine oil temperature sensor. Sealant is applied again to prepare for installing the lower oil pan. Machine applied sealant is far more precise than manual work. The lower oil pan is also installed by equipment. 
Tightening many bolts at once ensures even pressure, preventing uneven sealant thickness that could lead to oil leaks. Next, the timing belt pulley is installed. Then comes the engine oil filter, which needs to be replaced during every maintenance service. That is it for this episode. Follow me for the next one, where I will show the installation of the timing belt and other key components.